From one end of the galaxy to the other, there are green-skinned oddboys known as Orc Flyboys that hurtle into battle with the sole intent of creating as much high-speed carnage on their DACA jets as possible. Many fly solo, giving themselves overblown names such as Captain Killwigs, the Black Baron, or the Flyboss Dacafrag in order to strike terror into their enemies and impress their peers. We've talked about Flyboys on the channel before, if you guys want to get a refresher I'll put a link up above to our 40 facts on the Flyboys, but in today's video we're going to talk about a very notorious orc boy known as the Crimson Baron. And with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about this special orc character. If you guys are new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. What I try to do is I create a video with a lore portion in the beginning, and then I connect it somehow to um, some portion of the hobby, whether that's a painting tutorial, a showcase video, or terrain tutorial. If you guys like this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, and tell your friends. I also try to answer questions down in the comment section below, so if you guys have questions about what we're going to talk about today, or anything in the 40k universe, just ask down in the comment section below. I'm going to start answering them the next day. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Orc Flyboy, the Crimson Baron. One of the most infamous Orc Flyboys and perhaps the finest Orc fighter ace ever to have lived was the Crimson Baron. This aggressive and speed-crazed greenskin gained notoriety throughout the Ultima Segmentum for his unmatched piloting skills and his ability to pick off enemy flyers like a bird of prey. Much of the Crimson Baron's success can be credited to his powerful ramshackled aircraft, the Crimson Dakajet. Streaking into battle through war-scorched skies and leaving oily contrails of black smoke in his wake, the Baron's Dakajet was capable of some incredibly tight turns, which made him a fearsome dogfighter. The Crimson Baron always believed in quantity over quality, and ensured that his Daka jet was strapped with every gun a mech boy had in his shop. In the heat of battle, while corkscrewing madly through the enemy aircraft, the Crimson Baron would cut loose with his full arsenal, and slaughter enemy pilots left and right. It truly was a spectacle for other greenskins to watch, as a long and uncontrolled burst from his wing-mounted super shooters took down the foe in a blazing ruin. At times, the wild twists and turns would point towards the infantry below, and both Greenskin and the enemy ground formations would be decimated by his roaring barrage of bullets. The Crimson Baron's true skills, however, were showcased during his air-to-air -air dogfights, where every enemy he faced felt the panic from the furious firestorm at their tail. Orc legends say that at the height of his skills, the Crimson Baron can pick off two or three enemy fighters with a single stream of bullets. The skies would fill with the black smoke of downed aircraft, and the only thing in the sky would be the glorious red Daka jet of the Crimson Baron. While the majority of greenskin pilots stenciled enemy kills onto the hulls of their plane, the Crimson Baron's Daka jet remained free of any marks. Whenever any orc made a comment about this lack of record keeping, the Crimson Baron would remind them that if he bothered with marking every kill he'd made, he would need a flying gargant. Like all truly murderous orcs, his success on the battlefield was only matched with his ego and the only thing that could drag the famous pilot from the sky was boasting about his skills to other flyboys in his clan. Eventually, the Crimson Baron got the attention of the foul-tempered and ambitious evil son warboss, Skullcrumpa, and instead of smashing the arrogant flyboy to a bloody pulp, the warboss convinced the Baron to join him in a quest to carve out a greenskin realm in the Ultima Segmenta. With the promise of more death choke skies, the Crimson Baron flew off alongside Wog Skullcrumpa. They eventually landed on the Imperial world of Cadrim. And as the Greenskin Assault tore into the planet's outer defenses, the White Scar Space Marine chapter flocked to the besieged world's distress signal. When the White Scars launched an aerial assault, dozens of orc planes came bursting out of cloud cover with the distinctive red Daka jet of the Crimson Baron at their head. Zigzagging like a bat out of hell, the Crimson Baron was having the time of his life watching Imperial Flyers nosedive to their death. Even the legendary vehicles of the Adeptus Astartes couldn't match the wild tactics and just dumb luck of this ace fighter. There came a point where his Daka jet seemed to defy the laws of gravity. As the White Scar zeroed in on their target, the Crimson Baron would somehow change course and end up right behind the Space Marines, shooting off a stream of bullets that landed their mark every time. The only thing louder than the weapon fire and the explosions was the Crimson Baron's laughter as his enemies dropped like flies. However, things would change. Completely unbeknownst to the Imperial and the Greenskin combatants, the world of Cadrim was once a tomb world of the reclusive Necron Nilak dynasty. Following the awakening of the slumbering Necrons beneath the planet's surface, the Crimson Baron eventually met his first defeat at the hands of a Necron Doomscythe. 
Surviving the crash, the Crimson Baron soon took to the skies again in a borrowed Daka jet from a rival fighter ace. In a subsequent battle, he engaged aerial forces from both the Necrons and the White Scars during an attack on Fellstorm Airfield. During this battle, the Crimson Baron got his revenge by shooting down four Necron Doom sites before he was shot out of the air by a Space Marine missile launcher. It is completely unknown if the Crimson Baron survived. Now that we know the lore to the Crimson Baron, it's time to paint an Orc Flyer. This is my Waz Bomb Blasted Jet. This is a model that I built probably a year ago and it's been sitting on my desk. I was able to prime the entire model yellow and then hit it with a sepia wash. Um, whenever I paint models uh, that are going to be yellow, I like to prime it that color just because it makes it a lot easier to go back and highlight the yellow. Uh, yellow is just one of those colors that you just it, you struggle to get it onto the model. I use tester paints and even the tester paints don't really catch on to the actual uh, plastic that well. Uh, so like I said, prime the model yellow and then paint the uh, the rest of the, the details. Black usually covers really well over it. I'm not going to get very far. All I'm going to do today is paint the black pieces because like I said in previous videos, it's always better to paint the metallic pieces with a black undercoat and then highlight or dry brush with a metallic. And this is as far as I can get. As you guys see, I didn't get very far. Um, today's Friday, so I'm actually um, going out later. I don't have time to you know, give myself an hour to paint. Um, and the thing about these big pieces is that it's really important for you guys when you're painting a big piece to spend your time and actually get it right just because they're your centerpiece of your army. So when you're playing against friends, their eyes are going to gravitate towards the biggest thing, which is this. Um, and if you can notice, like the gun in the bottom, the, the jet, the orc in the middle... Those are things that require more detail and you have to paint them at a time when your mind and like your energy is there. It's just not there for me today. Um, I, I'm, when I get back home, I might continue to paint some more, um, but again, it's just going to be blacks, coppers, and silvers, so nothing too major. Um, but yeah, expect more video vlogs with or painting vlogs with, with this guy uh, probably tomorrow. Now, I did want to answer some questions that you guys left off in yesterday's video. This was the 40 facts on the Adeptus Custodis. I hope I pronounced it right. Um, I was pronouncing it Adeptus Custodis. You guys said that that was wrong. And then I Google, I went on Google and I looked up to see how you pronounce it. And it said Custodes. I was like, oh, let me pronounce it as Custodes. But I guess that's wrong too. Um, but either way... Sorry about that. Um, let's get into the questions. The big one uh, always comes up with really good questions. He asks, how tall is a custodis? Uh, nine feet tall, um, which is pretty huge if you think about it. Like, we think Shaq is tall, and I wonder how tall Shaq is. I bet you he's going to be like, well, I was going to say seven feet tall. Let's see. Yeah, Shaq is seven feet one inches. Yao Ming is 7 feet 6 inches. So an Adeptus Custode would make these guys look super uh, short. Uh, not to mention that when you look at these guys, like in interviews and stuff like that, they look odd. Their, their proportions are kind of weird, like arms and legs. Uh, when you're dealing with an Adeptus Custode, like he is built. He is built like you would see Arnold or something. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. These guys are supposedly like gods. Uh, amongst uh, humans and stuff like that. Uh, good question, though. The next one comes from Nemanha Razevic. Which race do the Chaos Gods prefer and why? For soldiers, slaves, food, etc. So Korn doesn't care about the race. All he cares is that blood flows, uh, or whatever the comment is. Uh, Nurgle, same thing. If anything, he kind of likes um, when a race is resilient against his diseases because he can perfect them and create new contingent contagions. Um, Zinch likes any race that seeks knowledge. During the Great Crusade, I felt like a lot of Xenos were worshippers of Zinch. Um, and then Slanesh, obviously, the Eldar. And the reason for that is because the Eldar birthed them. And the Eldar are seen as delicacy um, towards, like, the Chaos Gods because they are the most psychically powerful warrior race. Uh, it is described, like, if you were to describe psychic powers as fire, 
An Eldar is a bonfire, while a human is a candle, and a Tau is a, I think, a spark or like a match or something like that. Um, so yeah, the, the Eldar are like Popeye's biscuits, you know what I mean? Really, really good. Um, this next question, it's not really a question, but it's a comment that I want to address. EDU says, missing the 40 facts, now it's just 5 minutes with 8 facts and 10 minutes with painting. Yes, I know, it's a bummer, um, but the old videos kind of sucked, um, especially with like the longer, like 20 minute long videos. Um, I was super tired because I came from work, um, so all I wanted to do is get the video done, the editing was trash, my voice was trash, um, and then I would just put that out there. At least, with, at least with these videos, I'm spending more time on the lore and I'm spending more time on this extra bit. Um, so sorry, um, hopefully it improves, um, you know, tell your friends that the, uh, channel is still out here and hopefully we can get, um, more time spent on these videos. Uh, but I do appreciate you watching. Um, Rome Lazo says, Ape Gang for Life, AMC. Yes, if you are in AMC, um, hold, please. Um, <laughs> um, we'll see if we can get to... If not 100K, um, 40K. Uh, this next question, if you guys don't know, just check out Trey. I think it's Trey Trades or Trades with, with Trey or something like that, the YouTube channel. Amazing, really fun guy. Uh, it's awesome just to watch, even if you don't want to like buy into AMC and stuff like that. He's just really entertaining. But anyways, next question comes from Forge Master. Which Chaos God would the Adeptus Mechanicus join and why? This kind of ties in with the previous question. Uh, my answer would be Zinch, just because um, the Adeptus Mechanicus has the quest for knowledge, which is like inspired by the Omnissiah. Knowledge is basically like Zinch's realm. Um, he is the changer of ways and like when you think of like, you know, sorcerers and stuff like that, it is Zinch. Um, so I would say Adeptus Mechanic is going to Zinch, but they can be corrupted by all of them. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. I will talk to you guys in tomorrow's video. Ask questions in the comment section below if you need to. Um, and thanks for watching. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out.